Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to my uh, this lecture that is on aspects of biochemical engineering and last uh, couple of lectures we tried to discuss the um, uh, that you know uh, microbial system for substrate utilization product formation cell mass formation uh, by using different microbes and we made a detailed analysis on the process now this uh, this lecture is uh, something related to that, but little bit uh, advancement of the chemostat process. We know that uh, major drawback of the chemostat process is, uh, is the cell mass wasting from the reactor, because uh, we know that because when you consider any kind of, uh, of, of continuous start tank reactor, there is the inflow of substrate, there is the outflow of, of product, and when uh, since we have it is a continuous start tank reactor we assume that whatever cells that present in the reactor that also remain in suspension. So, it is also going out with the outgoing liquid. Now, if the rate of cell mass that is going out of the from the reactor is more as compared to the cell mass growing in the reactor, then what will happen is situation will come when there will be no cell present in the reactor. So, this is the major drawback of the chemostat process. The and, uh, and you know we have I try to explain the situation that the every cell has the generation time and we know that 1 by d is equal to hydraulic retention time. Now, suppose you operate a system at very high dilution rate and you know one hand is so that your and the retention time of the liquid in the reactor much less than the generation time. So, before your cell multiply you are taking out the cell from the reactor naturally you will not get any cell in the reactor. So, this kind of situation can be overcome by two different approaches. One is if you recycle the cell back to the whatever excess cell you are taking out from the reactor if you recycle back the cell to the reactor then naturally your cell mass concentration will remain constant there will not be the situation of cell wash out. And second situation is that I told you, you if you immobilize the cell on a solid matrix, so that you hold the cell like this and you pass your substrate like this, though there is a less possibility of cell wash out. Now, this particular uh, <coughs> that lecture we try to discuss the, uh, say the process with the CSTR with cell mass recycling, and we have taken this uh, with respect to one particular uh, process what you call activated sludge process which is largely used for wastewater treatment process. Because uh, we know that uh, it, uh, there was a survey in India that you know uh, long before 15 years before by the central pollution control board and, and they observed that uh, most of the chemical and biochemical industry in India they are contributing the wastewater pollution problem. And uh, it is mand it is mandatory for all the industry. They should, uh, before they dispose the waste water to the water courses, that should be treated properly, so that they should not have any kind of harmful effect on the environment. So this uh, the activated sludge process is largely used for the waste water treatment process. So this I shall I am going to discuss um, uh, this in the, in the lecture and also. I am going to discuss how we can do the process design because you know that uh, uh, that you know we try to develop the equation maybe in the next lecture I shall give you more detailed information how we can do the uh, do the uh, detail do the detailing of the process design. Process design means to run the process whatever parameters we shall have to uh, calculate to the how what are the different parameters we should calculate we should determine for running a particular process that I shall show you in the next lecture. But this lecture will try to analyze the activated sludge process. Now, if you look at 
the first the activated sludge process what is the what do you mean by activated sludge process activated sludge process is a continuous start tank reactor with cell mass recycling that means the we know this is a continuous start tank reactor am i right there is the inflow and outflow then with cell mass recycling that means there will be some kind of cell separator a part of the cell you recycle back in the system so this is called cstr with cell recycling with cell recycling am i right so that uh, so activated sludge process is nothing but this is the feed and this is effluent this is your effluent and this is sludge wasting sludge wasting okay now it is designed to remove the soluble biodegradable organic matter because here let me explain that because uh, you see that you know when when the waste water contains some kind of organic matter how we can remove now if we use any kind of chemical process we shall we shall have to use some kind of oxid uh, chemicals which have the oxidizing property as for example potassium dichromate potassium, potassium permanganate so you know that uh, the, that we use uh, if you if you treat this waste water with uh, with this oxidizing agent then all the carbonaceous matter that will be conver converted to carbon dioxide and water but the problem is that when you use any kind of chemicals for the oxidation of organic matter so uh, first of all it is a energy intensive you have to heat it at high temperature at the same time you have to use lot of chemicals but now when we use this chemicals particularly heavy metal toxicity toxicity of the water that will be increased as for example potassium dichromate if you treat the waste water that means chromium concentration of the water will increase the potassium permanganate that if you use the manganese concentration in the water that will increase that is undesirable so in if, but if you look at the biological process in another way that if there is any kind of soluble organics present in the waste water our bacteria can easily utilize this uh, organic matter for the growth and multiplication when they grow that this soluble organics can be converted to the converted to in, insoluble biomass and this insoluble biomass which is insoluble we can easily separate it out if you separate it out you will find it is a clear liquid and that is why that the activated sludge process is largely used for the waste water treatment process purpose the recycling provides the cell mass concentration almost constant in the reactor i told you the main purpose of recycling we want to maintain the cell mass concentration uniform so that rate of reaction in the reactor should remain constant and recycling is necessary uh, increases the mean cell residence time now since in this reactor if you do the recycling then what will happen the recycling that means what i say the cell cells we are recycling back that means the cell retention time in the reactor that will increase that is why that is exactly so in that case the mean cell residence time should be higher than hydraulic retention time now in case of cstr cstr or chemostat what is happening the mean cell residence time is equal to hydraulic retention time am i right but when as soon as you do the recycling then the mean cell residence time is higher as compared to hydraulic retention this is the main purpose of recycling now this is how how this uh, process uh, diagrammatically i can explain this is waste water this uh, it uh, first we have the preliminary treatment preliminary treatment it has uh, might be having some floating matter it may be the bigger particles that is usually separated out by the uh, settling process and then we have primary clarifier where that you know that uh, smaller particles suspended particle that will be uh, separated out after that it passes this is the activated sludge process where what we call it a uh, aeration tank where the where the aerobic organism will grow and utilize the soluble organics for their growth and metabolism then this cell mass is a insoluble mass that is separated by the secondary clarifier system and then this uh, this cell mass we separated out this is the waste activated sludge and the clear liquid is take it out and we we use some kind of disinfection like chlorine treat and finally we 
disposed to the water courses. This is how the process is operated. So, basically our activated sludge process is the in the CSTR with cell mass recycling. This is the process that we have. Now, uh, now in if you look the in uh, that you know how it is in practice in the industry, it it is like the like this that you know this is the this is the surface aerator. This is called surface aerator. And the surface aerator that float at the at the top of the liquid. Now here you can see that how how the surface aerator is located in the actual activated sludge process. It is look at that. So what they do they 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 throw the water out. You can see that it is. They, they throwing the water out so that when you throw the water out, then air will come in contact with the water, and more air come in contact with the uh, water. The dissolved oxygen concentration in the water will increase. So that if uh, the dissolved oxygen increases, then the your organism will grow more, and they can utilize more soluble organic materi material for their growth of growth of the. Uh, uh, organism and uh, and the degradation of the organic matter will be more, which is more so desirable, because in case of aerobic fermentation process, major limitation factor is the dissolved oxygen concentration, because we know the microorganism can utilize the oxygen which is dissolved in the liquid, not like human beings. We we all human beings we can take the uh, uh, oxygen which is present in the air. But microorganisms they can utilize the oxygen which is dissolved in the water, and since the oxygen is sparingly soluble in water, so you would uh, that that is the limiting factor for the growth of the aerobic organism. So we shall have to increase the dissolved oxygen concentration of the uh, 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 in the liquid so that we our organism can grow very fast and it can utilize the substrate at the faster rate. Now this is that is why we put the surface aerator here, and then. Uh, so this is how it looks. So question comes: What are the principles of activated sludge process? Now, activated sludge process uses the microorganism to utilize the soluble organic contaminants present in the waste water. So what I just now I try to point out: the soluble organics converted to the insoluble biomass. Then common bacterial space that they use in the activated sludge process is Jocklea remigera. This is the typical type of key organism that is used in the activated sludge process. The important characteristics of this organism is that it is synthesizing or it produces secreting the polysaccharide gel. Since the organism, because we know bacteria, so what is the size of bacteria? Size of bacteria varies from 0.5 to 2 microns, and they are very tiny particles and very difficult to settle down. So um, that is the major problem because whenever we we handle any kind of bacterial process, the major problem we we face that is the separation of the cells, and 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 this organism has a characteristics of secreting the polysaccharide gel, and since it's secreted polysaccharide gel, the gel cell they will be uh, they they will be uh, they uh, attach with each other, and they will form the flock, they will form the flock, and this is called flock formation, and th then the particle size will be big. And as the particle size is big, it will settle down. The because of this gel, the microbes agglomerate into flock, and which is called activated sludge. The special property of the activated sludge is high affinity for suspended solid, including the colloidal biomass. So that you know that this suspended mass, what will be some uh, time the small particles that present in the waste water, they absorb on the surface of the of the. Of the um, this uh, cell surface and and uh, your wa your waste water, you will find the clear water. Because I can I can tell you that my personal experience that I when I was at the, at the IIT Delhi, I visited the Oakless Waste Treatment Plant. And if you are if you visit the Oakless Waste, I don't know how it now how it is now, but I visited in the year 1983. Then I found when I took the water in my hand, I found immediately that uh, that uh, cell that settled down, and we I get the clear water at the top. So you know this kind of experience that I have. Now uh, for ASP design, based on uh, th three different parameters, one is biochemical oxygen demand. Now what is the what do you mean by biochemical oxygen demand? Biochemical oxygen demand means as I, as I told you. Uh, for the, uh, when organisms uh, grow and multiply, they require the dissolved oxygen. 
am I right? So, um, so more the organism grow, more will be dissolved oxygen consumption. So, bi biochemical oxygen demand means the amount of oxygen required for the oxidation of the biodegradable organic matter. So, this uh, BOD is directly proportional to biodegradable organic matter. is directly proportional to the biodegradable. So, suppose if, if the BOD value is high, that means this has more biodegradable organic matter. If the BOD value is low, that you know that is a less biodegradable. I, in this connection, let me tell you that uh, uh, our drinking water, we know you know the drinking water as per World Health Organization WHO, the BOD of the waste to that drinking water should be less than 6 milligram per milligram per liter. Am I right? What do you call 6 ppm? So, this is this uh, this should be less than 6 ppm. Now, uh, the mixed liquor suspended solid and mixed liquor volatile suspended solid MLSs and MLBSs that is very important. That you know that suspended solid, we understand the suspended solid. How you define what do you call sludge? How you define the sludge? Sludge is a kind of uh, uh, insoluble uh, solid material, it may comprise of both inorganics and organics. Am I right? So, so, similarly that you know that when we have the mixed liquor suspended solid, it has uh, one is suspended another is volatile suspended solid. Now, what do you mean by volatile suspended solid? Now, if you burn it at uh, 600 degree centigrade, then whatever organic matter is there that will convert it to carbon dioxide uh, and all the oxides, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen will convert it nitrogen oxide, metal will convert it to metal oxide, but you know that metal oxide that remain in the form of ash in the in the uh, in, in your in, in your system, but gas will go out of the system. The gas always the remove you can go out of the system. So whatever things is converted to the gas that we call is volatile matter. You, you get my but the volatile matter indirectly it tells the organic ma organic content of the uh, of the solid material. So uh, since uh, our biomass or cell mass comprises of mostly the organic matter that is a volatile uh, mixed liquor volatile suspended solid what do you call MLVSs this we usually consider the biomass or cell mass this we usually we express as biomass or cell mass because when you burn it it produces a carbon dioxide and uh, uh, carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide nitrogen oxide that will go out of the system this is organic material and specific oxygen uptake rate this is very important. The reason is that since it is the aerobic process, question comes that how much oxygen is required for the oxidation of the sample. So, that is why this is very the <coughs> so you know these are the things uh, other parameters like you know that suspended uh, concentration of the cells and the outgoing uh, liquid that is effluent is the significant but not directly controllable. So, we assume the outgoing that cell that uh, the effluent should not contain much of cell mass because most of the cell mass we assume that is usually separated in the clarifier. Now, now question comes that uh, that uh, that uh, what do you mean by biochemical oxygen demand is the amount of dissolved oxygen that uh, needed by the aerobic bio biological organism to break down the organic material present in a given water sample at a certain temperature over a specific period of time. Now, usually we consider 5 day BOD. Now, why we consider 5 day BOD? Now, if you look at BOD is a biochemical oxygen demand, am I right? BOD versus T that is like this. Now, this is called this is 5 day and suppose this is 20 day, am I right? All the here all oxygen all the organic matter that will be oxidized. Now, here 5 day we have observed that approximately 70 percent organic matter will be oxidized. Now, since it is the operating parameter naturally we are interested that you know that uh, in the how this uh, parameter can be monitored very short time that is why we express as 5 time 5 day the beauty. Now, for the purpose of uh, that uh, process design 
the measurement of BODU, what we call ultimate, this is called ultimate, this is called BODU and this is called BOD5. So, this is impractical because you know you have to wait for 20 days that is not uh, feasible. Now, best approximation is obtained through the use of chemical oxygen demand because why the chemical oxygen demand is very good, good because chemical oxygen demand is the amount of oxygen that is required chemically for the oxidation of the sample and this can be done within 2 hours. You just take the sample and and and, uh, and reflux with potassium uh, dichromate for 2 hours. All the organic matter, all the inorganic matter that will be oxidized. Then you, you calculate, you, you through titration you find out how much potassium dichromate has been exhausted that consumed. So, from that you can find out the COD value. Now, uh, the COD of a sample, if you see here, this is keep on decreasing with respect to any treatment process is keep on decreasing. A time will come when it is constant. Now, this when it is constant and this uh, this is the input and this is the final value and this difference is the, uh, this is actually the BOD value. So, so from the COD value we can easily we can also find out extrapolate the BOD value by the help of this particular curve and BOD estimate by the azide method. The, uh, the dissolved oxygen concentration can be estimated by the two methods. One is by using the uh, dissolved oxygen probe and that by the chemical math method uh, what we call azide method we can use that. Now, mix liquor suspended solid to achieve the high conversion obviously the high cell biomass concentration is required and most commonly measured the cell. The ratio of uh, this uh, is very is not constant, but ratio plays very important role. MLVSS I told you MLVSS indicate that how much volatile suspended solid is there. That means, volatile suspended solid indicate that how much cell mass is there. Now, if the ratio is more that means, your suspended solid contains more cell mass. If the ratio is less that means, suspended solid contains less amount of cell mass that is inactive material. So, that is undesirable. So, typical range of MLVS by MLSS is 0 0.75 to 0 0.95 depending on the waste water and system operating conditions. Specific oxygen uptake is defined as the that uh, rate of oxygen required uh, both for substrate oxidation and the growth of the cells. Now, specific oxygen uptake I told you this is equal to 1 by x d O 2 by d t. Am I right? The, this is the rate of oxygen uh, consumption and this is 1 by x is called the specific uh, oxygen uptake rate. So, this is we can write that the oxygen must be transformed from the gas phase to by some mecha mechanical means. I, I told you surface aerator, I told you surface aerator, I show you aerator is used to transfer the oxygen present in the air from the air to the uh, water and currently transfer rate is uh, 1500 to 1700 grams of oxygen per uh, uh, per uh, meter uh, uh, square meter per day are economically used for air the oxygen source. Now, this is the activated sludge process let us see how we can design that. In case of activated sludge process I told you it is the this is the CSTR and this is the uh, the settling tank separated and you recycle back the cells here. So, it is CSTR with cell recycling. Now, here three assumptions we made the influent this is influent and this is the effluent am I right. Influent and effluent concentration is negligible S 0 becoming S this S 0 becoming S as soon as this uh, fold in the reactor due to the complete mixism and all reaction occurred only in the bioreactor not in the pipeline or separator. Now, if you have this, then we can write at the steady state condition biomass balance is the uh, what is x q 0 is the flow rate, q 0 in the x 0 is the input cell mass, then uh, then what is the biomass growth, the what is gen generation is the we can write this, this is uh, this is the growth of the cell, this is the death of the cells into B, this is the volume we have to consider and biomass output, uh, what is the output of the biomass, that output is going out here, because 
we want to do the balance across the this system, not across the reactor. So, with the, there is a two outlet, this is Q O 0 into K X E and, and this is the X W is the wasting flow rate and X E is the settle cell mass concentration. Here is the X E. Now, assuming the, because in this problem we have made such an assumption that influent and effluent, uh, influent, influent and effluent uh, concentration of cell mass is negligible. Am I right? So, if you if you if we assume that influent and effluent cell mass is negligible, then then we can write this equation in this form. This is V equal to this. Uh, this is equal to K and and this e equation I can write in this form. That is uh, mu max S by K S plus S equal to Q W X U by V into X L plus mu D. And then, if you do the substrate balance in the similar way, Q into S 0 is the rate of substrate uh, uh, that you know input and substrate consumed is this one and substrate uh, uh, what is the output? One is with the effluent that is uh, Q 0 into, into S and Q W into S. So, and this is uh, if, if you do it, this will be Q 0 into S and if you simplify, you will get this particular relationship. Now, we consider both the equation 2 and 3, then we will get uh, this equation, we will get this equation that you know q w equal to uh, q, q w into x u b x uh, uh, mu d equal to this. Now, here I as I told you the main uh, purpose of recycling is to increase the cell residence time. Now, in the reactor, what is the what is the cell present in the reactor? This is the volume of the reactor and x is the cell. The total amount of cell is amount, total amount of cell is how much? Is V into x, am I right? And what is the cell wasting from the system? We assume most of the cell is going out from the recycle tank and this is this is coming in. So, this is what Q w and x u that this here we have we have uh, we have uh, Q e into x e, but this we uh, we assume to be 0, am I right? So, we assume most of the cell that is wasting from the uh, this wasting line. So, uh, so, what we can write that mean cell residence time mean cell residence time is equal to what? Equal to V x divided by rate of uh, that you know the cell that is wasting from the from the from the system. So, this uh, this uh, this will this will the unit will be time. So, this is exactly what we have written here. You can see this is written here like this and if we put this value and this is equal to theta c. <coughs> now, we can put this theta c here 1 by theta c and then finally, we will come across this equation x equal to this equation and this equation we can write we know theta what is theta? Theta is the hydraulic detention time V by f am I right. So, we can we can easily find out the volume of the reactor. So, we can V equal to from this equation we can find out this relation. So, so we can easily find out the volume of the reactor. Now, uh, for the, for uh, the computational model the ASP is similar to the microbial process and the monode equation we use for the and monode equation uh, this is the modified monode equation. Monode equation is this one mu equal to mu mu max s k s plus s, but we modify because uh, cell death is, is uh, occurred in a particular my uh, in a living population. So, actual the net growth of cell equal to growth of the cell minus growth uh, the death of the cells. The beauty removal rate we can write q s equal to q max s by k s plus s. This is uh, in, uh, without considering the endogenous metabolism of the cells. Now, these are the different constant value I can that is uh, shown here this we quoted from this reference. So, these are the different range is the like this and typical values are given here. Now, here we have come across a new term what you call f by m ratio. What is f by f? f stands for food and m stands for microorganism. Now, how you can find out what is the food? The, the, the f into x if, if is the volumetric flow rate, is, is the substrate concentration and what is the microbes present in the V into x. So, this is the this is called 
food by microorganism ratio. This is how the unit is time inverse. This is used to designing the loading of the ASP. If the FM ratio usually reported at BOD per gram of MLVSS per day, per, per, uh, per day. So, this is the, the another very important problem of the activated sludge process I told you the separator, separated where the cell mass is separated that is the sludge volume index is the kind of important parameter that determine the settling characteristics of the sludge. Now, here we can find out that uh, a sludge volume index uh, is the volume occupied 1 gram of activated sludge of the mixed liquor solid after settling 30 minutes in 1000 milliliter graduated cylinder. Now, if the sludge volume index 35 to 150, then it is a good settling sludge. If it is more than 200, it is, it is called bad sludge and healthy sludge contains significant population of filamentous organism and protozoa present are mainly stalk uh, ciliated species. The poor sludge contains filamentous bacteria and fragilized protozoa. So, these are the problems. So, so, uh, the sludge characteristics also plays very important role. Now, this is uh, this is the uh, how the clarifier looks. This is you can see there is here here the sludge that will settle down at the bottom, and this is little bit inclined, and this is a scrapper. You know this scrapper it it rotates very low speed, and scrap in that way in a manner so that all the sludge will come here, and then we can take take this out from this in this direction. So, and, and that you know the solid that uh, clear liquid is usually comes out from the top. This is how the clarifier looks. Now, sedimentary tanks design of sedimentation tank is based on two factors overflow rate and solid loading rate. Overflow rate uh, defined as the flow rate divided by the surface area is equal to the critical settling velocity under the ideal condition. Values uh, are in the range of 200 to 500 cubic meter per square meter per day range and solid loading is 3 to 6 kg per square meter per hour per day hour range and the depth of the horizontal velocity is uh, that you know 30 meter per hour and uh, the hydraulic detention time is uh, a detention time is 2 hours to provide 1 meter uh, sludge storage. The typical uh, depth is 3.5 to 5 meters. So, in this uh, particular uh, presentation, I try to discuss that uh, what do you mean by activated sludge process. I told you that activated sludge process is a process through which you can remove uh, the uh, soluble organics present in the wastewater and also it is a process uh, through which the drawback, one of the major drawback of the chemostat process that is the cell mass wasting from the reactor is uh, can be or you know that what problem that we face that is cell wash out that problem can be overcome. So, how to analyze this system that I try to explain and, and uh, also I try to find out that mathematical correlation just to find out how we can determine the cell mass concentration in the uh, in the uh, activated sludge process, how you can find out the volume of the activated sludge process. And I told you whenever you do the recycling of the cell, main purpose is to increase the uh, retention time of the cell. So, in this case the solid retention time or mean cell retention time will be more than the hydraulic retention time. And also I, I try to discuss that uh, the settling characteristics of the sludge. I told you if the values lies in between um, uh, 550 to 150, then it is a good settling sludge is more than 2 hard line is a bad sludge. So, uh, and uh, how the clarifier looks. So, this I try to explain here. I hope in the next, uh, next lecture, I try to discuss the process design of the activated sludge process. Thank you.